I had made a conscious decision to give Paris and Zell a whole fresh clean slate with me to to do whatever it was that they were going to do and they did it and i'm like come on through cook yeah i want to pull my soapbox that's basically it. let's talk about drag and all its forms Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode four. Like I said, Paris and Zell. I had really get I really had kind of like stepped to the side. I was like, I like his new little haircut. And you know, I'm like, okay, and I'm like, okay, Paris. Like, Let the draggings begin. Anyway, first things first. We'll get to them. Booby. Booby, you at it again. He's another one. I made a conscious decision. I said, I'm going to let Booby do what Booby's going to do. Of course, Booby's going to do what Booby's going to do. Booby's going to do what he's been doing. Hot dick. That's Booby. So, I'm like, okay. They got this little scene down there. The boys is all playing basketball. Booby's trying to basically clear things up because he is hitting at April. He want to get him a little taste of April. Well, y'all know usually I don't be I don't get into this whole thing of watching the blogs. I kind of just try to stick to the show. But you just can't miss it because there was so much going on. And you know, April's box has been a topic around the Twitter and the Instagram world, okay? So I'm sure if I seen it, I'm sure Booby seen it. And you know, April said out of her own mouth, you know, everybody wants some of my it, you know, all that. And Booby's like, Well if sure, I want some of it too. So he was kind of trying to square it away with Fizz. And Fizz is so busy in the midst of living this lie that he's like, oh, well, you know, me and April were like good friends. He's still trying to hold on to the lie. And I said, you're not real good at this, huh, Fizz? You're not good at this. Um, But I know you're not stupid. And I know you're not blind. I want you to look real good across the basketball field and I want you to look at Booby. You think April won't fuck Booby? If you do, you're a fool. Booby is cute as a button and Booby got a hot tag. Okay? See, Booby's the hot tag, it got a name around the streets of its own. An old hot pussy April. <laughs> you needed to be telling Booby no, no, and no. That's when you should just gave your whole life. No, no, and no. Because you just scheduled yourself for a little heartbreak, a little stupid look afterwards, and a little bit of, you know, Booby don't mind jumping on you too. Booby might whoop your ass too. We see, see, we didn't see Booby and how Booby carry on about somebody else's woman. You, I, I, don't, I don't know if you want to, you don't want to bubble with the bee, honey. And I'm talking about Booby. Booby's a whole mess. But, um, all right, bruh, whatever, see? It's a, it's a tangle web we weave when we practice to deceive. Fizz. Move on. K. Michelle and Brittany B. They had this little sit down. And both of them were given hater tease. Both of them. Kay was hating on China, Black China. She was going through this whole big thing. Kay, baby, what is your problem? What do you care 
if Black China makes music. What does that have to do with you, Kay? If you don't sit your ass down somewhere, I'm going to need you to chill. You got too much going on. You're trying to get too much going on to be doing all this dumb hating. Like, you hating on Black China. Shut up. I don't care what background Black China, if she wants to make some music, it don't have nothing to do with Kimberly. See, I'm never going to call you Kimberly because you're not acting like Kimberly. You're acting like Kay Michelle. Kay Michelle is a petty bitch. Kimberly is supposed to be this businesswoman who happens to sing country music. I ain't ran into her yet. I keep running into Kay Michelle. I like Kay Michelle, petty and all. I like Kay Michelle, but I ain't seen Kimberly yet. And you're making it very hard for me to even envision who or what Kimberly is supposed to be. You on that petty bitch shit. And you was going in about Black China, and Britney B didn't really appreciate it. And at the same time, Britney B is a pre is a petty bitch too. She's pretty. Ooh, she's definitely down the petty trail. And she decided to go in on Lyrica because Kay started talking about how she misses Lyrica, and she really kind of is not feeling how they fell out because a lot of it was Kay's fault um and then that's when Britney B was going in she don't like Lyrica now there were some pictures that they were showing production shows some pictures of them together which shows that they definitely at some point were friends and Lyrica's doing the Hollywood thing undoubtedly she's basically running around acting like she don't know Britney but Brittany, for just a few weeks now, we just met you like four weeks ago. It was the fourth week. I'm sure there's a background story. Because you've actually showed, you showed us your ass just a little bit in these first four episodes. These first four episodes have me questioning you and who you are and, and how do you get down. Because you got a lot. You got a lot. You, you, you show me a lot. You got a lot of little hater in you. And and it's so crazy to me because they've painted you. You're this talented girl. You got, you know, all the opportunities that you need. You got all the talent that you need. You have the doors open that you need open. But yet I still see you hating on a lot of people and I don't understand it. So I'm I'm kind of thinking that it must be an internal thing. You just must have hater on your bones you know because some people just have hater on their bones and no matter how successful they become or how much things you know how many things they acquire they just just all hateful bitch any old way and i'm kind of that's what i'm starting to feel from you and i don't want to because you are so talented i don't want to view you that way but that is how you are coming across and you went through this whole thing about lyrica and it's one thing not to like a person, even if they didn't do anything to you. It's another to get into a thing where you don't like them and you're hating on them, and then you start lying on who they are as a person. And this is what I've seen you do when it came to Lyrica. I'm going to give it to you. Lyrica, Lyrica's a bitch. Lyrica can be very much bitchy and sometimes hard to get along with. She's a little spoiled, but... For you to sit around and say that she's not talented and that you opened some doors for her, you couldn't open doors for her if she couldn't walk through them, not the doors you're talking about. And for you to say that she's riding on A1's coattail, bullshit. I call bullshit because I've, I've been following Lyrica and I listen to her work and I like Lyrica stuff. You're lying, sis. When you say Lyrica can't write, yes, yeah, she can. You're lying when you say Lyrica... Lyrica can sing, she can write, and she can put some shit together. So you're you're lying. You're lying. When you're trying all this she's riding on A1's coat. A1 is the one I don't know his stuff. I don't know his stuff. I know he has a name in the industry, and I know that he's done some stuff in the background, but I've actually heard Lyrica's music. I have some of Lyrica's music. I know what she can do. I ain't ran into a thing. 
of A ones that I wanted to buy. Not a record, not a, a bottle of fairnail polish, not none of them hairdos, nothing. I I ain't subscribed to a damn thing that A one is putting out into the world, other than Lyrica. So I don't know about this. Her riding his coattail. Uh, mm, mm, I, I don't know. I don't know, sis. I don't know what car they in, but I'm not going to sit up and say she in the back seat. I think you're hating, but whatever. So, um, that just. Mm -hmm. Later on in the show, we actually saw Kay actually go down. She, she made a, uh, she reached out to Lyrica. Lyrica was in the studio working on some stuff. She went on down there. They talked. Squashed the beef. Um, they both shed some tears. Come to find out, like Kay, you know, Kay told Lyrica, mm -mm. of course, she's like, you know, I'm really sorry about what I did. Didn't know that it was actually going to really affect you the way that it did. I messed up. And I missed my friend. And told her, you know, um, basically that when she got to looking at it and thinking about it, they've been through some of the exact same things. The situation she's going through with A1, with the whole having the baby and the man cheating at the same time while you're trying to have his baby, you know, been through the exact same situation. We know how, we know Kay's track record with men and how men have taken her through and how she takes herself through with her crazy, you know. <clears throat> so they had to come, they came to a meeting of the minds and everything's cool now. They're fine. And then Kay actually even invited her because she was saying, um, A1, she, um, let's just wrap all of their stuff up together. She was out actually earlier on an episode with Princess looking at apartments. A1 rolled up on her and basically, you know, I, I'm really starting to not like A1 at all because he's just an asshole. And he really, his little, this little stardom that he has going on, you know, he, he's getting the fame now. He had the work and he had the money before the show. But now with the show, he's getting the fame part and he ain't handling it well. He really is a fuck boy. Like he really is. And he has this whole toot and he just be clowning to me and she's really over it. Like you can see she's like over it and he asked her to come and do some dates with him, perform, and she was like telling Kay she don't know if she really want to do all that. So Kay actually invited her to come and do perform on a showcase with her and I was like good. And you know Kay was telling her you can get back to your music and this that and the other because you got to raise this baby and all that and I was like good, good, good because you know I like Lyrica stuff. The song that they had her working on that she was playing with when Kay came in, I was feeling that. I like Lyrica's aesthetic. I really do. Um, And I think what happened, I don't believe that. I think when Kay had her conversation with Britney, it pushed her to actually reach out. You know, I think she was thinking of it anyway, but it really pushed her to reach out to Lyrica, because I don't think she liked what Britney had to say about her friend. And I think Kay kind of took the, the stance I took, like, bitch, you lying. Like, you sitting trying to make it like she's not talented, and she most certainly is. And I don't think Kay cared for that. Y'all know how Kay get down, and Kay is a certain way about her friends. And I think that she really didn't care for what Britney had to say about her friend. Lyrica, so she's going to go on and help her to do whatever it is she needs to do to prove herself. And I was like, see, this is that that part right there. That's the K. Michelle that I like. Because even through her mess, she has a good heart. She's a messy bitch. That's all. So I was like, okay, I'm here for this. So all of that went down. Okay, so let's talk about Mickey Monday. Um, Mickey Monday is interesting to me. Mickey Monday, he got a lot of shit going on with him. And I told y'all, I kept looking at Mickey and looking at Mickey and they kept, they, they tried to brand Mickey as like just this white boy who just happens to, to be able to rap a little bit or 
whatever. But first of all, Mickey's not a white boy. Okay, so let's just square that away and let's stop playing that game because we got to meet Mickey's family. Mickey's very much Italian. I'm looking at him. He looks very Italian to me, very much Italian, um, which explains the soul part of it. Italians have soul. Italians have swag. So none of this stuff you're talking about, like, really? And I kept, when I was looking at Mickey and looking at his skin and looking at his hair and just all of that, and I'm like, I'm sorry, he's not reading white boy to me. I'm looking at Mickey and I'm like, hey, Mickey. <laughs> hey, Mickey. Hey, 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 Mickey. Hey, listen. So we can stop this with just this whole absurd thing of just him being just this random white boy. He's not. He is not. So, okay. Now let's talk about how <laughs> Mickey's very interesting. And yeah, he got that whole Italian stallion thing going on. Listen, and if he ain't Italian, it's something else. Somebody put it in. He not Caucasian. I'll give you that. Him not Caucasian, but I'm saying Italian. And he has the whole Italian stallion thing going on. And he got the whole attitude of it and all of it. And I am here for every bit of it. Now, listen, listen. So we get to meet the family. We see the mother and the father. Y'all seen that spaghetti on the table and all of that. It, everything there to me read Italian. Cute little daughter and all that. I got nine-year-old little daughter. Seen the sister. Beautiful. I and it's not that there's anything wrong with, with Caucasian folk. I got no problem with Caucasian folk. Y'all know I don't. But he not that. So just stop it. Like, like, they're just trying to make him seem so random. You know, like, stop. Justin Bieber's random. Justin Bieber is a random white boy who has talent and just happen to have swag. That ain't who Mickey Monday is. He not. That's not who he is. Y'all know what I'm talking about, what I'm trying to say. Let's go on. Um, found out that he's an actor as well. Okay. All I need to know now is that he can dance. Honey. Is he a triple threat? Can he sing? We heard him do some of that too. So stop playing. Um, he had a lead role on Empire. Chose, he had to choose, he came into a situation where he had to choose. And he chose music. He chose his first love, which was music. And there was a deal with Akon. He chose to go with Akon. In the long run, it ended up being a bad idea. Because when he did that, some stuff jumped off that had to do with Akon, and it kind of sad swiped what he was doing, and he just came to be at a standstill with, I think it's Corrupt Records is what it is. So that all leads us to this new person that we met named Trisha Anna, who is the wife of Akon, who is an executive at Corrupt Records who, now here comes the Italian stallion part, y'all paying attention? Here we go with the Italian stallion piece of this. Who, Mickey got signed to them. Anna was working with Mickey. Anna has, I believe, four or six children. Four or six. And Akon got a big, about nine and a couple other wives and all of this kind of thing. Well, Anna didn't fit in so great with the whole harem thing. And they had some problems. And her and Akon were broken up for about a year. And in that year, she was actually working, you know, she's doing, doing her thing as an exec with the record company. And she was working with under four and about. Mickey. Stallion. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, 
Mickey, you got some shit with you. You got <laughs> you got a record deal and everything through Acorn. Are you fucking his wife? <laughs> oh, Mickey. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. And I'm still down. Yeah, Mickey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ain't shit random about Mickey Monday, okay? I am very interested to watch Mickey and see what Mickey... I'm for Mickey, okay? I <laughs> Mickey got him a role up here. He had a, he had a role on Empire. Sound like Mickey should have been on Power. <laughs> okay, but anyway, we're going to keep on watching Mickey because Mickey is interesting as hell to me. He ended up having uh, a little dinner with good old Trisha Anna later on in the show. And the interaction between the two of them, honey, yeah, Mickey was blowing her back out. And she still, it ain't over. It ain't over. The fat lady ain't sang on that little thing just yet. Um Mickey feels as though Akon dropped the ball. Um, they got to work through that stuff. And at the end of the day, Miss Trisha still got a little thing for Mickey. And I understand it. I ain't mad with Trisha. But I said, yeah, I got my eye on them too, honey. And Miss Trisha's wig. Girl, that was a nasty old platinum blonde wig. I said, oh, this bitch's wig was so late. You girls on here, pay attention to Trisha's wig, honey. That's how you lay a lace front, honey. Her wig was laid. Do you hear me? It was given. I said, girl, get down. Get down. Wig was everything. Everything. I was like, all right. Okay. Anyway, so we got all that going on. Now, Monice, let's go and see what Monice and April is doing. Monice and April got together with Stevie, which is Monice's cousin, which is the vocal coach, and they were doing some more things. Monice sound good. April don't sound bad. Timid, but not bad. Brittany rolled through. Brittany's a messy bitch. I keep telling her. Every time I see her, I'm like, she's starting to wear on my nerves already. But she rolled in. And she come in a little shady, okay? She come in very shady. She ain't got it for April. She don't. She don't got it for April. She rolled in there and she start trying to stir the... She literally came into the session and started trying to stir the drama between Monice and April. Yet you're supposed to be working with them. You're a messy bitch and I got my eye on you. Brittany, I got a feeling before this is all over, Grandma end up dragging you. And I ain't gonna like you very much because you are very, very busy and very, very messy. And you messing it. You telling people how serious you are about your money and your business, but this is your business project and you trying to cause drama between your own clients. Girl, I don't know about you. I really don't. Anyway, continue on with Brittany and her messy shit. She ends up having this bowling party mixer. Now she invited Zale to the mixer. Zell, in turn, invites Paris. Now, remember, they had, had a conversation about Brittany, and um, Paris was, I don't really know, about, but I don't know much about her. Don't, you know, just ain't feeling her too much. So, Zell and Paris came, and as they were coming in, they got dropped off for their ride, and they're coming in. They all, you could tell in their conversation, they were already with the shits coming in the door. They they were coming in. They had shade on their mind. I said, Zell's back up to his old tricks. How do you come to an event and you already got the shade ready and blazing for the host who actually invited you? And Paris was just doing Paris. She was just hating. Coming in the door just hating. But they come in. Jason Lee is there. Mr. Ray is there. Mr. Ray and Zell are actually hugging. And Jason Lee is like, whoa, when did that happen? When did y'all make up? You know what I mean? With his messy ass. And um, that's when uh, you could tell 
Brittany is friends with Mr. Ray. Brittany has also had some interaction with Zell. They probably crossed each other, you know, during some business or whatever. But she says, see, look at my friends getting along. And then that's what Parasol hating ass was like, uh, child Zelda went, oh, y'all with the Hollywood shit, all that extra shit. Y'all, a minute ago, y'all was arguing. Why are you hating? Y'all just got here. Why are you hating? But wait a minute. When they first come through the door and she sees Paris, Brittany and her shady ass, will say, did y'all catch an Uber? I said, oh. now Zell and Paris, and Zell, I'm shocked with you because you're a queen and you didn't catch that you were getting red. I mean, that was a blatant read, honey, that you came to function in the Uber. And you let it go. It went right over your head. You didn't even catch it. And then old stupid Paris then caught up. It, ca it caught up after she made the statement about them two, about him and Mr. Ray. And then that's when Brittany was like, Brittany went full throttle. Now, I had to give her this. I think she's shady. But this was so to the point and so fiercely shady when she said you know what not to be funny or anything but i didn't invite her at all i said oh not getting thrown out <laughs> and that's exactly what what began to happen at that point because paris was like oh uh-uh and she's like why don't you just call the uber back and y'all go ahead and she said, oh, that's what she meant by the Uber. I was like, ding, 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 ding. And finally caught up on statement. She was reading the fuck out of the two of you all. Absolutely, honey. She gave, why don't you pull your phone out, honey, and call your Uber back? I'd rather have you all leave. I was like, oh, honey, and then Zell starts showing out, honey. We can all be shady. Girl, she got y'all. She got y'all. You two clowns have already lost this this round you came in she read you about how you got there and then y'all tried to be shady and she cut y'all off at the knees and threw you out you all lost this round anyway it ended there so it'll pick up next week i'll be there to talk to you all about it but um yeah zell and paris I ain't using the two of you all. I gave y'all a chance. I thought y'all had, you know, was bringing something different to the table. You two are too messy, bitches. And mm -mm, mm -mm. as much of a messy bitch as Brittany is, Zell and Paris, messy bitches. Oh.